Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Please give God a great big praise. Alaben al Señor en este momento. Este es un momento muy sagrado, muy importante porque está la presencia de Dios con nosotros y vamos a abrir su palabra en esta mañana y Dios va a hablar a nosotros. Amen. God's going to speak to us this morning. So this is a holy time. It's a precious time. This is an anointed time. Oh, come on somebody, help me out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tengo tanto gusto estar en la iglesia con con mis hermanos, mis mis amigos. You know, um I, when I walk in here and I see all the ones that I, you have been with Pastor Zeke and Pastor Nelly all these years, uh, you know, I come in and I look for you and when I see you, ah, oh, you know, it's like when you go see a good friend and and you ask for their kids and the kids are there. You know what I'm saying? Y qué triste cuando se aleja un hijo o una hija de la familia. It's just sad, you know, when one of the kids isn't in the home anymore. They're rebelling or whatever, giving the pastors a hard time. But I know that that doesn't happen in this church. Amen. Hallelujah. We had a great time at the women's conference. I think I scared Pastor Zeke last night. He said, are you all right? You know? I said, I'm fine. Uh, you know, haven't you ever seen a, a woman with a Holy Ghost cruda? <laughs> you know, it's the best kind. Amen, sisters? Praise God. We love it. You know, can't sing this morning. I don't know if I can preach. I don't care, man. We're, we're just going to do what God says. Amen. Father, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It's a privilege. It's an honor, Lord God. When a man of God is not threatened by a woman's skirt, it just shows that he's a greater man than other men. And I thank you, Father, that he trusts me behind this pulpit. But even more so, oh God, I praise you that you trust me behind all the pulpits where you have stood me. I thank you, Lord. I love you. I fear you. I want you, I need you, I trust you. My life is in you. Without you, I'm a worthless dead woman. Oh God, but in you, it feels good to feel your power surge through my veins. Father, thank you for your word this morning. You will confirm it with signs and wonders following. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You know, um, Hallelujah. As I travel from church to church and as I pastored 20 years over there in San Bernardino, Southern California, I see that God's children always have a cry. Los hijos de Dios siempre están llorando sobre un problema en su vida, algo, una circunstancia. We're all involved with some kind of a problem a circumstance you know what I'm saying but I'll tell you what it's all about after 40 years of knowing God después de 40 años de conocer al Señor se me está prendiendo aquí el foco okay I'm beginning to see the light and what I have seen is that heaven is a wonderful place heaven is a holy place el cielo la gloria es un lugar santo y es un lugar donde no se permite el pecado. The Bible says liars won't go to heaven. Ooh, ooh. You know, if you're a shucker and a jiver, you know, ooh. You can't shuck and jive in heaven. You know, if you're, you know, whatever you are, if you're a jealous person, si eres celosa, envidiosa, if you're a prideful man, you know what's worse than a prideful man? A prideful woman. Prideful woman. You know, Pastor Zeke just yelled out, two prideful men. I know, I, because I'm a woman, I know that a prideful woman is, is worse than a prideful man. You know, it really is. And we like to point finger and, oh, men are prideful. And, honey, shut your mouth. You know you love that boy. Can't live without your prideful man. But let me say this. The issues that we have in life, 
are because we need to be perfected to go to a perfect heaven. And so we don't like being perfected. We want to get to heaven the way we want to get to heaven. Your problem is you can't get into a holy heaven your way. God's way or no way. You can say it. God's way or no way. No way. Got to be God's way. And so, you know, I've noticed this about, about the church. And, and I understand now that the hassles we go through. I have a 41-year-old daughter. Yesterday was her birthday. I called her up. And I said, happy birthday, mija. And she said, you remembered? And I said, mija, I was there when you were born. I better remember. You were a big problem 41 years ago. And... Um, but my kids are used to that mama's out preaching the gospel, you know, come anniversaries and birthdays and whatever. Nothing's more important to this woman than serving God. I've got to serve God. I've got to serve God. And, you know, church, I, I, I go to altar calls. I hear the people. I minister to people at altar calls. And what I see is that God is trying to perfect his church here in this world according to his word he said i'm coming for a church without spot blemish or wrinkle and we want to be all manchados hediondos apestosos you know what i'm saying en el espíritu queremos ser así honey it, that ain't gonna work for you child you, you need to get blood washed every day all the time somebody my prayer to god is Father, I love you, I worship you, I need you, I want you. And oh, by the way, please forgive me again. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. And so today, uh, what I want to, to say uh, in, in just a few minutes, I, I don't have a long, long message. Pray for me, I, I lie a lot. But, but uh, I, have, I have entitled this little message, um, Nothing Surprises God. No hay nada que sorprende a Dios. Nothing that happens in your life surprises God. Now, I want you to go with me to the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It's a very popular, very well-known scripture. And, and in this word, it says, I know the thoughts that I have of you, says the Lord. And, you know, I'm a little, just a little bit of a Hebrew student. I've been studying this for a while. And the word there, I know the thoughts, the thoughts, los pensamientos, is machishabeth, uh, machishabeth. And the word machishabeth means this. I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. God has plans for you. Tell your neighbor, God's got a plan for me. Oh, God has, you know, and it's very natural. It shouldn't surprise you that God has plans for you. How many are fathers here? Don't you have plans for your sons and your daughters? Yeah. The problem is, is that they don't want to do what you've planned for them. You know, my dad wanted me to be a professional singer. My mom wanted me to be a nurse. And guess what? I turned out to be both. But I had to do it my way, not their way. I wanted to run away from home. Uh, at 17 years old, I wasn't having fun at home anymore. I didn't want to answer to my parents. So I eloped. And there I, a door was open for me to, to, to find Jesus. Because, you know, marriage sometimes, especially without you. Now, with Jesus, it's hard enough. But without Jesus, it's hell. Hello, somebody. Help me out. Con Dios, con el Señor, es difícil ser casado. Pero sin el Señor, olvídate. Olvídate. And so, you know, I did things my way. But isn't it sad when you want, you want your son to grow up maybe to be a lawyer. And then he grows up needing a lawyer. Hello? Yeah. You didn't plan for your son to be a criminal. You didn't plan for your, for your son to be a thief or, or a rapist or, or a drug addict. Th those aren't the plans. Did anybody plan something like that for your kid? Because you're crazy, honey. But you know what? What's different about 
what, why do you think different about God? God wants the best for you. Mahishabeth means I have plans for you. And, and you know what else it means? It, it's funny because when you study Hebrew, it's a trip. You're going one way and all of a sudden it stops and it starts going this way. And, but, but this makes sense in the end. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good. I, I don't plan to hurt you, honey. And it's sad that so many people, ay Dios mío, por qué, por qué. Oh, hush, child. Wait a minute. And then God says this. He says, I know the plans I have for you. And then he says, I am Jehovah God, the strategist. I strategize in your life. He says, when you're going straight and the devil drops a detour in front of you, he says, guess what? The devil can't make a move lest I permit it. I am the God of Job. And what happened? Thank you, baby. What happened was, you know, uh, the devil came and, and asked God, uh, will you give me permission? Will you give me permission to mess with your son Job? And, and you know what happened? Praise God. God said, go ahead. Calate. A ver que te va a pasar con, con mi siervo. With Job. And, and, and he strategizes, you know, see, he allows the devil to put a detour sign in front of you. Hello. He allows it. But he says, I'm still, even though you've come into a, a detour or maybe a stop sign, he says, I am still the strategist and I am strategizing for you. I turn around and I put up detour signs for the devil. When he's coming at you, he says, I get before you and I say, stop. You can't come a step farther. And, and you know, when things happen to you, please don't give the devil so much credit. He's not there by his own will. He's there with permission from God. El diablo no te puede atacar sin tener permiso de Dios, Padre. If he doesn't have permission, si no recibe permiso de Dios, el diablo no se puede mover en tu vida. Oh, baby, that's good preaching. Devil can't move in my life, lest he has permission from my daddy. And so God says, I have continued to strategize for you. And then, the, the, oh, what I'm such a, I'm a military lady, you know. I love war. And, and I know this, that a soldier can't attack. And a soldier can't make a move without his orders. There's got to be a reason why he's going to attack. A soldier can't just, like, like my brother when they were in Vietnam, they just couldn't go anywhere and start shooting at the grass, at the bush. You know, they, Americans would have been killing Americans all over the place. It's hard enough, you know, when you got to go in there and fight the enemy. But when you start fighting yourself, hello, somebody. And it's God's children that are famous for doing things like that. La envidia, el orgullo. Pues esa hermana se cree esto y se cree la gran cosa. Y oh, no conoces al esposo. Shut up. Why are you shooting your own men? Why are you shooting your own women? And in your home. Why? Why do mothers want to attack the, you know, I learned low self-esteem by watching my mom and dad because my dad was a professional yet he was an alcoholic and my mom was a professional yet she was a prideful orgullosa mujer and bien persinada y mi dad cuando la traba trancazos I would go to the phone and hit the, the O dial and my mother would say hang it up hang it up Yo no quiero que nadie sepa. I don't want nobody to know that Spinoza's have problems. And she's still that way. And I tell her, Mom, watch this. Nine, one, one. Ah! I tell her, I ain't got no pride. Ain't no shame in my game. I will call the police. I'll call the highway patrol. I'll call the National Guard. I don't care who knows that my family and my house and me are all jacked up and towed up. That's why we need Jesus. We need Jesus because we got problems. 
And the main problem is that God is trying to strategize in your life and you continuously want to fight him. Oh, don't you, don't you get upset and angry? You know, when my daughter was on the drugs and, and running around with a guy that was, ugh. How many, how many grandparents are raising grandkids here right now? Raise your hand. Huh? Yeah. You know, you think you did your job and you kiss them goodbye and, you know, you make their bedroom into an office and the next one leaves and you make that bedroom another office. But because, you know, especially Chicanos, they get married, they come home and they bring a chorro de chavalillos. So you got to turn every bedroom into something quick. Otherwise, you're going to have a hotel there. The free, free. When my daughter first got married, <laughs> my, my second daughter, she, she was first to get married. And she had the baby, and the baby was sick. And so, of course, I said, you're coming home, and you're bringing my baby with you. And um, so she came home, brought my son-in-law. Yo quiero mucho, mucho quiero a mi, a mi yerno. I know that's strange for Mexican suegras. Pero lo quiero muchísimo, lo quiero a mi hijo. Uh, se le murió su padre cuando tenía 14 años. <clears throat> Después su mamá se murió cuando él tenía 18 and so es huérfano, mijo. So yo lo quiero mucho. Y mija, she's a spoiled brat. And I go, hey, 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 you leave that orphan alone. I'm going to stick up for him. A ti es la que te voy a agarrar del chongo. Usted cállese, deje, mijo. Mom, you're all jacked up. He not your son, he's your son-in-law. You're not supposed to like him. Well, if he was good enough for you to marry and love, then he's good enough for me to love him too. You know, we got to stop the curse and the fame of being bad suegras. Mexicanas, tenemos, tenemos una mala reputación, que somos malas suegras. Hay que amar a, a, a nuestros, nuestros hijos, you know, a los in-laws y los outlaws, y all of it, love them all. But, but my daughter, the older one, andaba con este hombre, y andaban en las drogas, y, y yo le dije a mi hija, ten mucho cuidado. Cuando vayas caminando en la calle con ese viejo sinvergüenza, le echaba sus buenas allí. I didn't sin, but you know, I, I called him what he was. Uncircumcised Philistine covenant. No, no covenant with God. And you're a covenant woman and you want to run around with that loser. Uncircumcised, no fear of God going to hell. Things like that, you know. And, um, and I, I, I told her, I said, tú ten mucho cuidado. You be real careful when you're walking down the street. Oh, well, nobody wants to kill him. We don't have any contracts. I go, I want to hit you with my car. Be careful. You know, so what am I doing? You know, God's trying to perfect me. And I'm going, perfect me after I kill this sucker. I have good reason. You know, he's no good. And, and the, the, the real reason was that he was beating my little baby boy, mi nietecito. Me lo golpeaba y me lo dejaba morado a mi bebito. And you know que un hijo se adora, pero un nieto, oh, amahaya. I mean, oh, you're not going to touch my baby. You know, I'll get a weapon on you. Or I'll pay for somebody to use a weapon on you. Anyway, I'm resisting God all the time. Do I have anyone else in the house that can, can say guilty as charged? Come on. L liars don't go to heaven. You know, we're guilty. And God is saying this. He's saying, honey, I am trying to get you ready for heaven. I'm trying to get you ready for heaven. You know, when Pastor Zeke was in um, boot camp. My God, I saw a documentary the other day, The Making of a Ranger. Ay, Dios mío. And I was thinking of this man of God, and I thought, he went through that to be a ranger? You know, life expectancy, he said, you know, when you get into a hot, hot zone, a battle area. What was it, brother? 45 seconds, and that's rangers. Those boys are trained to kill and not have any remorse. They're, they're taught how to kill with their just one finger or two fingers. You just pull out the eyeballs. And they're, they're, they're taught and trained to ignore pain. 
you know, and sometimes we get a little cocoa. Ay, Señor. And these guys are like, wow. They almost become machines. Well, actually, that's what they are. And I was watching this. And I, I heard the CEOs, you know, get out of that. You know, and I'm thinking, would Pastor Zeke have lived through that kind of training if the CEOs would have said, would you please come to attention? Now, would you like to learn how to clean your weapons today? Class. <laughs> You all heard that album, huh, Cheech and Chong? Class. But, you know, they would have never learned anything. And yet we are in the greatest military that the world has never known or seen. And, you know, we are going to come back and we're going to be responsible for ruling and reigning on this earth with Jesus Christ. There's a different time coming ahead of us. We don't know anything about Gog and Magog. We don't know it. We don't understand about the millennium. All we want is God, give me the money for, a pay, for my gas bill this month. And there's so much more ahead of you. Now, you know, the Bible, the Bible teaches us, it, it, this is a training book. And if you notice, from the garden to all the way to you know, the book of the New Testament right before the Revelation. Everybody's in trouble. Somebody's sinning. You know, David was out there checking out the chicks when he had a whole bunch of them in the palace. He still wanted more. He had Uriah the Hittite murdered. Took Bathsheba right out of the bathtub. I mean, and the, this is King David. If he did stuff like that, ¿por qué se espera de mí, señor? You see what I'm saying? And yet God knew something. He kn this is why I entitled this little message, and I'm almost through. Nothing surprises God. Why so many problems? He's trying to prepare you for heaven. ¿Por qué tienes tanta problema en este mundo? Porque Dios está queriendo prepararte para que llegues y entres al cielo. En un santo cielo. A holy heaven. And, and look. We read Jeremiah, I am strategizing for you. Now, now I want to take you to Genesis 15. I probably won't take you to, to maybe, maybe just one more scripture. But in Genesis chapter 15, everybody say, this is a good chapter. Yeah. And we're going to read uh, from verse 12 to verse 14. And it says, I hope I have the right one. Yeah, I do. Verse 12, are you there? It's chapter 15, verse 12. And, and it says, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Está aquí durmiéndose Abraham. And it says, And he said to Abram, Know of surety that your seed, está hablando del futuro, y le está diciendo, tu simiente, ok, está hablando de su simiente, le dice, your seed, y acuérdate que uh, cuando Dios hablaba estas cosas a Abraham, when God was speaking these things to Abraham, Abraham didn't have no kids, and God's talking to him about his kids, somebody say hallelujah, man, see God knows our future, he, he knows what's going to happen, because he planned it all, oh my, ok, well anyway, let's go on, he said, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And, and he says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is years and 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 years before Moses appeared, before, before uh, the children of Israel were held in Egypt. And God is already talking to Abram. See, God knows your life. He knows your, he knows your past. 
But he knows that your past stops with the blood of Jesus. It's behind me. It's dead. I had a good ride to church this morning with the sisters because we were talking about for all the men we loved before. We're talking about our ex-husbands. And I do praise God for being abandoned when I had one little girl and pregnant from my, my second little girl. And my husband said, I've had it. I can't be married no more at the Wacho. And I said, wait a minute, man. You know, we got a little girl. She's very close to you. And we got another one coming. Are you crazy? Are you, you're kidding, right? And he started putting things in a pillowcase and he left. That's the way he left. And you know, I didn't, I didn't really, you know, I didn't know Jesus. Somebody had given me a paperback Bible. A lesbian came to my door. She was trying to get me to Jesus. And all I could think was, oh, I, uh, uh, I may, uh, boys may be bad to me, but I still like the boys. I don't want nothing to do with you. I said, you better not come in here trying to, you know, well, you know what I'm saying. And I said, because I will kick your, you and your Bible right out of my house, and I'll do this, and I'll do that. And, and she said, okay, okay, okay. You know, but she kept coming back. And I accepted Jesus because I was hurting. I was brokenhearted. I was disappointed. I was dumped. I was pregnant. I mean, my life was a mess. And I, I did. I ran to Jesus. Call me coward. I don't care. Go ahead. I'm happy, baby. And And... After I started serving God, I went to Bible school. I, I sang Amazing Grace at a wedding. I sang, uh, uh, what's the name of that song? To God be the glory. Uh, yeah, to God be the glory. Um, my tribute. That's what it says, my tribute. And I sang that at a wedding. And you know, that was the beginning of my ministry at a wedding. And all these pastors were there because the guy who was getting married was a pastor. And after the wedding, I had a bunch of men, a lot of pastors. And, who are you? Where'd you learn how to sing like that? Because I guess they never heard anybody sing Amazing Grace with a, with a blues lick on it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I recorded a, a mariachi tape, and one of my, one of my songs is, um, it's a polka, it's a, you know, tipo tejano, you know, Tex-Mex. But at the end, I told the guys, they give me a blues lick on it. It might imagine a, a Tex-Mex song ending with a blues lick on it. But that's Terry, just crazy. Love music, love Jesus more. And so I praise the Lord because this guy left me and I got introduced to a brand new world of Jesus and singing for Jesus and getting invited to churches just to sing. Guess what? I only knew two songs. Amazing Grace and To God Be the Glory. And I only, knew, I only learned to God be the glory because that pastor asked me to learn it and sing it at his wedding. And the only reason I could sing Amazing Grace was because when I went to my first Bible study, I stole the hymnal. Because I used to hear the music. Dun, 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 and it was Scottish bagpipes, and I love bagpipes. And I, I, I used to, you know, smoke a little J and vacuum my little house and drink me a little wine cooler and vacuum my little house and... And I would hear that on the radio. So I went to the record shop. Imagine that's how old I am. I went to the record shop. <laughs> and I bought, I bought this, this, this music. And I used to love listening to that. And I used to think, man, somebody had to write some words to that song, you know. That, that's, a good, that's a good tune right there. And I would, and I'd. You know, mess around with it and smoke a little J and back to my house. And I, and I used to think about, so I go to my first Bible study in the whole wide world. And the pastor says, open the hymnal to 123 and the little viejita on the, on the piano. Ding, ding, ding. All right, church. Amazing grace. And I'm sitting there boring. How sweet the sound. And I go, wait a minute. That's my rola. <laughs> That's my song. Somebody put words to this thing. Yeah. I like this Bible study. I'm glad I came here. You know, when I got saved, oh, mercy. Jesus had so much to fix. So what did I do? I did the right thing. I stole the hymnal, put it in my purse. Thank you, Jesus. Great Bible study pastor. 
And I left, and I run to my house, turn on that bagpipe music, and I begin to read it out of the hymn, No Pobrecita Santita de Dios, you know, con el, con el himnario jambado, y ahí estoy. Oh, hallelujah, and I'm singing Amazing Grace. And so <clears throat> conviction came upon me because I was never a thief. And so I went back to the Bible study the following week, and I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, I, you know, I was a good Catholic girl, and I said, I have a confession. Do you hear confessions? <laughs> no, wrong church, Terry. And I said, well, I have a confession to make. And he said, what's that? And um, I said, you know, I was here last week for the first time, and I really, 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 I've been listening to this music, and I really like it. And I thought, man, somebody had to write words to this thing. And so you, you, you told us to sing number 123. And that, that was the words to my song. And I stole the hymnal. And he looked at me and I thought, dang, I'm going to get 10 Hail Marys for this. And four rosaries for sure. And so he said, I'm not going to forgive you. And I thought, oh, man, I'm going to hell for sure. And he said, lest you sing it. And I said, you don't want me to sing that because, you know, I, I do mariachi and I do blues. And he said, well, I don't know how Amazing Grace would sound mariachi style. And I'm thinking, Amazing Grace. Yeah, you know, I thought it could be done. And uh, he said, w why don't you sing it the way you would sing it. And so, <laughs> it was a bunch of viejitos, and they were Americanos to boot. So here comes Terry, La Negra. And, uh, I, 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 oh, 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 sweet the sound and the Americanitos and the pastor went like this I mean I don't know how the pastors do this thing and the weritos they do this but he went <laughs> and that was the stance like Teresa, you're going to burn in the eternal fires of hell. That's what the nuns did that to me. And so I thought, oh, man, uh, go for broke, Terry. Just finish your song. Go away. And, um, but when I got to the place where it says, um, I once was lost. God, I was so lost. Jesus, I'm still lost. Help me, Jesus. I'm so lost. Have mercy on me, Jesus. See, I was used to doing that. When you sing blues, you could just do that. And I'm repenting to Jesus in song. And the man says, that's it. You are my praise team leader. You are my praise team. You're going to direct my church and worship. You're going to do it, Terry. That's it. You're forgiven. Amazing grace. And I said, you got a problem. And he said, what's that, honey? That's the only song I know. <laughs> if you let me steal the hymnal again, I'll learn something else and we'll know two songs. But anyway, that was my beginning. You see what I'm saying? It was rough. I'm still rough. I'm not finished yet. You know what I'm saying? And neither are you. You know, you make mistakes and the devil comes to judge and condemn you that quick. Shut up. I love when Pastor Zeke says, shut up. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. There's another weirdo in the earth like me. But the Bible, Abraham was talking, God was talking to Abram. He wasn't even Abraham yet. He's just Abram there. And later on, we find out that God strategically put Joseph in a hole. He was strategizing for his people. He was strategizing for the seed that was coming. Jesus, the seed that was coming. That was a Plato in the Old Testament. God said the seed of the woman is coming. And the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head, Satan. 
And God put out that prophecy and that warning and that you wait and see it's coming a password. And so the devil was always hunting for the seed. That was the problem in the Old Testament. It's a story of how the devil was looking for Jesus. And he would attack the Jews at, at different times. When he saw Abram, when he saw Isaac, when he saw Jacob, when he saw Joseph, when he saw Ruth, when he saw Esther. He thought, you know, well, God didn't say if it was a girl or a boy. I think it might be a girl. Because he sure did love Eve. He took a lot of extra time with her in the garden. You got to understand, women, the devil hates women. Hello, somebody. We are vital. We are important. We can't back out. We can't. You know what? It's, you know what? It's forward march, women. Forward march. And in the gospel and in the army of the Lord, there is no about face. You don't look back, child. You just forward. Ah, you can say it better than that. Forward. That's it. Give God a praise, ladies. We're almost through. Hallelujah. And so what happened, God is here and he's strategizing for his people. And guess what? What do you call a Mexican woman with three eyes? Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. And so that's what happened. Ay, ay, ay. I have this Hebrew friend in Corona. I just love that guy, man. He's crazy. He loves God. He loves Jesus. He speaks beautiful Hebrew. You know, I went in there one day and I said, Menivi Ebrit. And he said, Shalom, Shalom, Menivi Ebrit. And so I said, Wait a minute, slow down, baby. I'm, I'm a newcomer to the block. And he, I've shared things with him and he's taught me a lot. But he's funny because he speaks perfect Spanish and his name's Victor. And I tell him, Victor, no me digas. And he goes, pues no me preguntes. He's just real crazy. Being with him is like being with my brother Zeke. But anyway, let me tell you this. What happened was God is strategizing here. And he allowed Joseph. Ay, pobre Joseph, porque sufría tanto. Surely thou hast said, no, baby, it ain't like that. It's that God has a plan. And there are some more Josephs in this house right now. And there's Josefinas too. And that's why you're going through some pain. That's why you're going through difficulty. That's why you're going through the uncomfortable times, you know. That's why, you know, even though men don't cry, they cry in secret. Women, we just, ah, we let it all out in front of anybody. We don't care. You know, when we go to the bathroom together, we're all in there crying, and somebody's on the stool, and we switch places. And, you know, that's women do stuff like that. You know, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. You want to go with me? Yeah, let's go. And, you know. Girls go, can you imagine guys going to the bathroom together to help him, Jesus? But let me tell you, let me tell you, Joseph was strategically placed in Egypt because God knew, guess what? God knew there was going to be a famine there. And guess what else God did? God promised Abraham and and he told him about this thing that was going to happen. And sometimes God's got to do some strange things to prosper us. Sometimes we've got to be broke to appreciate money. Sometimes we've got to be sick and feel pain to know him as the healer. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we we, we got to, our hearts have to be broken by, by even our kids or our husbands so we can know the power of restoration. So we can know his, his miraculous mending power. And, and so what happened here, this prophecy that God gave him way over there in Genesis now is coming to pass in Exodus. You know what that tells me? That God made a promise to a man that was alive. And long after the man was dead, God kept his promise to that man. Oh, you can clap better than that. You know what? I'm not discouraged in my prayer life anymore. I used to be. I used to say, oh, when, Lord, when? Surely thou hast forsaken me. Surely thou art deaf. Thou dost not heareth my cries. And you know what I found out? Even long after I am dead, 
my great-grandchildren are going to serve God. My great-great-great-grandchildren are going to serve God. My great-great-great, because there is a lineage here. There's a spiritual thing coming here. It's not about an umbilical cord that you cut. Our umbilical cord to God is never, ever, 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 ever cut. The devil's trying to cut us off from God. It's not going to happen. Even if you die and you don't see the answer to your prayers, God's going to come across for you. So when you're in trouble, when a problem happens in your life, when you feel like, oh, I'm going through hell. Yes, baby, you're going through hell. But it's just little hell because Jesus went through big hell. Come on, somebody. And he defeated it. He swallowed hell, death, and the grave. Oh, my God, Jesus. God is faithful. The God you and I serve is faithful. Stop sweating your problems so, so much. When you stare at your problems, God is there, but the devil is trying to divert you. And so you stay looking at the problem when you should be looking that way. You should be looking that way. I was telling you that we were talking about ex-husbands. The last man that walked out on me, uh, I went back to Bible school and I had an AA and then I got my BA because the guy left me. And you know what? The devil said, you weren't supposed to do that, don't I? You were supposed to go back to the nightclubs, sing some blues, you know, get some money and pay your bills. You were supposed to go back to the Alejandria and sing with the mariachis. What was I going to sing? Allá en el Rancho Grande? I ain't going to no Rancho Grande. I'm going to big heaven, honey. I got nothing to do with no rancho. I'm going to heaven, I said. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Where are you going? Where are you going? ¿A dónde vas por toda la eternidad? Come on, somebody. Vamos a la gloria. Vamos a vivir por toda la eternidad con un Dios viviente. You know what? I, I drip, I drip, I drip. The, the words is were to meditate. And this is what I was thinking the other day as I was reading these scriptures. I was thinking, what a trip. If I die and I don't see all the answers to my problems, and I'll be in heaven worshiping God and singing down Glory Lane and hanging out in Mariacho, Mariachi Avenue, and then I'll run over there and hang out in the, in the you know, Blues Lane and worshiping God. And then all of a sudden, they're going to say, Terry, yeah, you're being summoned to the Holy of Holies. Oy, Señor. And so I'm going to run to the presence of God. And I'm going to say, yes, Lord. And he's going to say, Terry, do you remember so many years ago you asked me to bless all the generations after you? Yeah, I remember that. I don't care anymore. I'm in heaven. They can do what they want. But he's going to say, today I answered that prayer. Remember when you asked me for this and this and that? Yeah. Yesterday I answered that prayer. Remember when you said you wanted this and this and that and that? Yeah. Day before yesterday, I answered that prayer. It's like, who cares anymore? I'm in heaven. I'm happy. You know who cares? God cares. Your prayers count. Keep praying. Tell your neighbor, keep praying. Keep praying. Sigue orando. Sigue orando. Sigue orando. Keep going forward. Forward march. Go forward with God because he, he knows how to keep his promises even to a dead man. Amen. He loves you today. And what you're going through today is no surprise to God. Dios no se sorprende con tus, con tus problemas. Son parte de un plan divino para perfectarte. Wants to perfect you so you can get into heaven. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to heaven, baby. Amen. Give the Lord a praise today. Oh, come on. Just praise him. Nothing surprises God. Amen. Hallelujah, Pastor. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's magnify his name. Vamos a alabar al Señor. Nada toma Dios por sorpresa. You don't surprise God. Don't think that God doesn't know what he got. Nunca pienses que Dios no sabe lo que, lo que agarró. Cuando nos cambió, nos transformó. Él sabía exactamente en qué se metió. God knew exactly 
what he got into when he got into our lives. God knew that. God knew that we were, God knew you were going to mess up. He already knows that. He knew that already. But he had an answer. Before you even committed the problem, God already has the answer. Hallelujah. Before you confronted that battle, God already had your victory. Hallelujah. Come on. Antes que entrares en la batalla, Dios ya tenía la victoria para ti. God knows you have some questions, man. God knows you have questions nobody else could answer. And so he's answering your questions. And he's forming character inside of you. You know, God doesn't get pleased with wimps. A Dios no le, agra no le agrada un chiflao, corre correlón, un sisilada. God is not honored by a coward. God is not honored by people that just give up and quit. Well, it's too tough, it's too hard. Get over yourself. Shut up. Get tougher. Get out. She's right. Terry's right. We had some... When I came back from Vietnam, I became an assistant drill sergeant. I was an ADI. God pitied the soul of those poor soldiers when they faced me because I had come back from Vietnam with a silver star, the bronze star, two purple hearts, one with a cluster. I came back with different medals. So I knew what battle was after 18 months in there. I knew, so when I trained them, they were going to get trained because I knew that 80% of them were going to die. I knew that. You could spot someone that was going to die. You knew more or less the one who was not going to make it. You try to give him special attention, but you knew that boy was not going to make it. The good thing is in God's army, we can all make it. We're all more than conquerors. Come on, hallelujah. Because it's not going to be you. It's going to be God in you. God's going to pull you out of that mess. Some of you are in a mess today. You're, you're hurting. You're, you're frustrated. You got a smile on your face like, Like everything's cool, but you know it's not because nada es como se ve. Nothing is that seems. You might be smiling here in the house of God and profiling and styling. But God is saying, God knows that you're hurting, your heart's been broken. Some of y'all, some of y'all even right now, you had some battles last night. Even after the conference, you, you had battles, you had arguments, you, you had dissensions. And you, you came to church. you're struggling and this is the time when the enemy starts battering you and bringing guilt trips on you but God is saying to you hey I still love you I care about you I know I know you're in a mess I can get you out I can get you out I can strengthen your life en todo esto que estás pasando Dios te está formando. God's shaping you. God's molding you. He doesn't, he doesn't shape you at the parties. He doesn't shape you at the park with a sombrita with Kool-Aid in the shade. No, no, no. It's in the fire. It's in battle. It's in combat. It's in the fire that, that you're going to shape. You're, we're in a spiritual warfare. I told you that. You're in a battle, honey boo boo. You're in a battle. This is real. This is tough. One last thing. When you go to these battles, a circumstance, you make a mistake, don't try to fix it by yourself. You've already messed it up by yourself. Now don't try to fix it by yourself. You're going to need some help to come out of that mess. You're going to need God. My father used to say, Son, don't ever, don't ever open a Pepsi or a beer after somebody shook it. Te vas a embarrar. You're going to get sprayed. You're going to get coke all over yourself. So when people come to me, Pastor, I don't have any trouble. You got to come over to my house. Go over, fight. And, okay, I'll be there. I'll go back. I'll go in the next day. Pues ya para que vienes, we fixed it. Because I don't want to get sprayed. Yeah? It's settled down. Many times when you're going through a trial, it's better to just step in the closet, get into prayer. Don't try to find out why it's happening or who did it. ¿Cuántos eran? ¿Dónde estaban? ¿Qué te importa? 
get in prayer and seek the face of God. And say, God, I know you're molding me. I know, I know you're shaping me. Right now, my wife is sister file. Hallelujah. Amen. And you're using her to file me down. It's okay, God. It's okay. Right now, Lord, I know my husband is, is, is Brother Sandpaper. He's rubbing me the, long, the wrong way. He's on my last nerve, Jesus. Good. If that's the last one, then we can fix that one. Let's, let's ask God today. Señor, ayúdame. Transformame. Cámbiame. Levántame. Mold me, God. Shape me. God told Jeremiah in chapter 18, shall the pot tell the potter how to do it? You don't tell God, Lord, así me, así me quiero. Me quiero así, me quiero. You know, I want to look like a, like a Coca-Cola bottle all over again, Lord. The Lord says, you do, you're just too litter. Stand with me.